8.tv and clicking on the logo for Art Finnell Reports. Moving on. You've heard it many times before, computer and video games under fire because of graphic violence and sexual themes. But do the games really lead to real life violence and sexual misdeeds, or is this all just a big to-do about nothing? AFR correspondent Jim Sardar looks at both sides of the issue. It was one of the worst school shootings in American history. Two Colorado teenagers gunned down a dozen of their teachers and classmates at Columbine. In the wake of the tragedy, people pointed fingers just about everywhere. They laid blame at the feet of the shooter's parents, the availability of guns, and some experts were quick to blame. Violent video games the boys played before going on their real-life rampage. But does virtual violence really make people more aggressive? Get up. Researchers at Villanova University asked 167 college students to play a variety of games, some bloody and violent, like Doom and Mortal Kombat. Others played more peaceful games, like Tetris or tennis. Then psychology professor Patrick Markey studied their level of aggression and the results, and his findings give ammunition to people on both sides of the debate. The most general question people always want to know is simply, do violent video games cause aggression? And the short answer to that is yes. They do, but unfortunately that's much, much too simple of a response. Although they do cause aggression, the effect is ex actually extremely tiny, that it doesn't have a huge effect on a person's aggression. And perhaps what's more important, what we examine in our lab or demonstrate in our lab, is only certain types of people are strongly affected by violent video games, whereas the, mass, the vast majority of people are completely unaffected by it. While violent video games may not affect most people, the study shows people prone to anger get much more aggressive after shooting and stabbing their electronic enemies after just 15 minutes of the control. The findings shoot down arguments that video games have no effect on school shooters, nor do they prove that virtual violence triggers them either. The professor calls the games a symptom of trouble, not a cause. So probably what's happening is these school shooters aren't doing these shootings because they played a violent video game. They're doing these shootings most likely because they're angry and they've been provoked in life. And you know, perhaps one of those provocations might be violent video games, but there's all the other daily provocations that happen. So it's, it's not the video game's fault for these school shootings. It is the person's fault for these school shootings. The finding does destroy the theory that violent video games help people relax by letting them work out their aggression. As a psychologist, we would love something like this. And for example, a clinical psychologist, if that worked, it'd be great to say, hey, come to therapy, you know, play Doom for a while, and everything will be okay. So trust us, we'd be the first ones to adopt this. But unfortunately, the data just don't, doesn't support the idea of this catharsis of letting out steam. But whether video games make you more violent or not, both sides agree on one thing. The gaming will go on. I'm Jam Sardar for Art Vanel Reports. And as the gaming goes on, we would like to know what you think. Do violent video games have an adverse effect on the players? Email your thoughts to cn8.tv.